Let's get to do it. So this is, uh, I'm analyzing this for Hero. Um, I think he probably loses this set. I'm not too sure, haven't watched it yet. But I'll uh, watch it just at normal speed one time. Watch the first game at normal speed and then I'll go back and analyze it. Okay. Okay, so it looks like Hero knows what he's doing in the matchup. Uh, he's abusing the platforms. Um, although it looks like he's coming down with... He's not really like adjusting his landing location that much. Okay. Oh wow. What a side beat. Goodness gracious. Okay. I get looks like he was trying to go for the sweet spot there. Okay, nice little dash. Good stuff. Oh, here, I'm definitely looking a little bit too down smash happy here. But it definitely looks like he has a solid idea on what to do uh, with regards to like being aggressive against Isis. Okay. Okay. Okay, absolutely. I mean, I think something I'm noticing right away is that Hero is uh, pretty predictable in the way he uses the platforms. Um, like, I don't think I've... I mean, well, I guess he's predictable in the way he uses needles off the platforms. Uh, like, he kind of goes for the same, like, the same motions over and over again, which isn't great against Ices. Like, he loves doing that uh, full hop needle. Yeah, that's what I like to see. Okay, so I mean, it looks like Hero's gonna win this game. I would, I would assume. Oof. Okay. Huh. Does he lose this set? Okay, I see. Oh, yeah, okay. I see a congratulations fry cook. So I guess he gets taken to FD. What? What is this? Student. 
Okay, this is this is gonna be a nonsense game. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna analyze this. Okay, yeah, good. Okay, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how I feel about going Peach if they counter pick you to FD. Although, I mean, not every Puff is gonna have enough fucking. Not every Ice is gonna have a p pocket Puff. Assume that Hero loses the next two games. Okay. Okay. So something I'm noticing already is that uh, you are so Hero. You're definitely a big fan of Down Smash. Uh, maybe too much of a fan. And I'll just. Start a serious analysis. So I'll put this at 0.75. Okay. So let's take a look at these situations. Uh, so uh, that's whatever. Okay. So I think there's a you have a pattern of your platform needle of your needling that the ice climbers have started to catch on to. Um, like, so after you, you needle, needle land the platforms and then you do this kind of fake, like you drop through the platform and then full jump up. Um, and then land with needles. And I think you did, you do this kind of thing a lot in game one. Um, and I think, the, I think Fry Cook is definitely recognizing that it's a habit for you. Um, I guess, well, let's look at the situation. I'll pause it. So right here. So you see, you know this needle is going to connect, right? Um, so needle connects. Um, and I mean, I think ordinarily this would be, like, honestly, okay, with how close the ice climbers are, I don't think that full jump needling is, um, is that good just because like it takes so long for you to get the needle out that they can have more than enough time to get under you um and they're already in a they're already in the spot where they can just leave dash forward once and then uh full jump up are you and like they're so like in this kind of position i think you would i would rather see you um just shield like sh like run off fair actually i think run off fair would be perfect here uh, yeah, actually, that's something I want to see you do more of, definitely. So I'll start up a notepad. Okay. So, um, let me just run off there more after your platform needles. And also, um, big habit of full jump needle into full jump needle and then on top. Oops. I think those those two things are definitely um, like use like kind of replace. Like I think what I want to see from you is like kind of replace the full jump needles, like the second full jump needle, like this. This one that you do right there, right? Wait, is that three needles in a row? So one, two, okay, so that was only two. Um, but you were doing this a lot in game one as well. And I think like, 
Ices, Ices players are going to be used to um, like figuring out how to beat the the camping strategies of their opponent. Um, so I think it's really important that you have to mix up the way you use your needles and not just do one um, like one specific type of needle like you're doing here. Um, like you could even just short hop, like short hop needle, and that would give them that would allow you to land and then shield. And then, like, uh, if they if they do this up air, that will let you shield drop fair them, or shield drop like back air, or shield drop up air even. Um, in general, use more variation. Use more variation in how you needle the platforms. Okay. Okay, I I like what you're doing here. Um, punishing the ICs for. Uh, twitches. Okay, yeah. Looks good. Looks good. Yeah, I like the back air. Okay. Um, okay, we have good stuff. Okay, actually, I really like. I really like these needles. I think those are some... I think you can stand to use those a little bit more. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, yeah, so this, at this point, the Ice Climbers player is really starting to catch on. Um, you're starting to aggressively read you doing another set of full jump needles. Like, he's starting to read you... Once you needle from the platforms, like, once you do one needle, he's starting to read you doing the second full hop needle from the platforms. Um, because you were doing it so much in game one that he's really just caught on to it at this point. Okay, so here you have a really good spot to threaten back here, or just up air them. Okay, so I think one thing I really want to point out is that when you get to a situation like this, like after you, when you land this F tilt on Popo, it's really important to just hit her as, as like hit him as soon as possible. Because then you just further separate the ice climbers. Although I Yeah, I'm not sure if this if this forwarder was supposed to be a full jump forwarder. Um but I think in I really think you should just be short hop instant fairing here instead of doing the full jump. Although I mean maybe you were Maybe if we're trying to read a double jump out, I guess. But I mean, if you have if you have the guaranteed follow up uh, off of the F tilt, I think you should just take it no matter what. Okay. So Fred Cook tried to punish you for this down smash, um, and I think that's another thing I would want to point out that you do a lot of unsafe down smashes. Cut down on the unsafe down smashes. Punishable on a block. Try to use the smash when it hit both climbers, not just one. That's a really important part of the matchup. Um, like not using your only using your like moves with uh, like down smash that have a lot of frames on them when you can hit both ice climbers. Because if you only hit one, then you're probably going to get just hit by the other one. You don't want that. You don't want that at all. Okay, so moving on. Okay, so I think this is another thing I want to point out is that it, lo it seems like you have a, like an unwillingness to move forward when you engage the ice climbers. 
like you're really trying to defend against their wave dashes in, um, but you can't always expect them to approach. Like that's just not always going to happen. Uh, so I'd like to I would like to see you dash forward, like in this kind of situation, instead of just always going to the platform, because I think. Um, I think at this point the Ice Fry Cook also has a pretty solid read on you, just like always going to the platform in these kind of situations um, instead of like short hopping forward. Okay. So, okay, so that's actually, this is a perfect example of the down smash that's really dangerous. Not that one, that one's more or less fine. I mean, it's not, down smash on two old, definitely not great. Um, but it's all right. But in this in this kind of situation, I think you you really can't down smash here, especially if you're down smashing Nana, because then Popo's just gonna come in and grab you and then chain grab you. Um, yeah, so definitely definitely cut down and see if down smashes. Okay, getting chain grabbed. Um, I think one thing you're not doing is mixing up your DI when you get chain grabbed. Okay, yeah, okay. Look at. So at this point, the Ice Climbers player is. He's totally caught on to what you do when you've cornered him because when you when you have ice climbers in the corner, pretty much all you've done, um, pretty much all you've done is like go to the platforms, like go to the platforms and transit up some some shield drop fairs and stuff like that. Uh, just cornered ICs. Okay, but this is... Oh, yeah, okay, you really need to calm down for the down smashes. Well, like, this down smash is fine. Eh. Yeah, I don't know if it's fine. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So another thing I'm gonna add in is um, try using um, be careful of down smashing on shield after you fair mix in more shot fairs. Okay, yeah, this is... At this point, what you're doing is really predictable. Like, you've done this, like, this sort of corner pressure for pretty much the entire set. Uh, like, you, I don't, you haven't really, it feels like when you have the platform available to you, you pretty much always go to it. Um, like, you never, you never just short hop. Like, you, you don't really short hop that much. You don't really full hop. Um, and it's, it's almost like you use, you mix up your, the way you use your aerials much better when you don't have the platforms to work with. Okay. Uh, I guess corner I use it. Yeah. Um, 
in general, try to mix up more. Okay, so that's a this is a big no no. This is actually a huge no no. So when you're in this position, oh man, I hate oh, Twitch. I hate that Twitch is has it like this when you pause it. It's annoying. Um, okay, so but when you get in a situation like this. With ICs, okay, so ICs are at zero. Um, you have you have a backer available to you, like you could dash that way, um, and then shield drop backer right about here. Oh, that's another thing I don't really see you using at all. Uh, dash shield drops. Um, um, except how you move on the platforms more. Use running shield drops. Uh, right, so the really important thing to remember in this matchup is that whenever ICs get below you, um, they're at an advantage just because you don't really, she doesn't really have a good way of, like, of threatening that space below her. Um, like, she has a good way of threatening, like, you know, kind of this range, this range, like, this range with back air, this range with, like, forward or neutral air, as well as the space above her. But it's not like you're going to be able to, like, drop down, like, down air them, or I guess you could drop down fastball and air them, but that's kind of hard to hit. Um, but what you really don't want to do is jump here, because then it just gives the ICs an, an opening to full jump up air you, and every single ICs is gonna be is gonna be looking out for that like pretty much all the time whenever they're playing against the Sheik. Um, so be careful of uh, putting yourself above ICs. Putting yourself above ICs. Okay, so be careful of full jumping when above ICs and opening yourself up to getting full jump upward. Um, I think when you're in this kind of situation, what you really want to focus on is getting to center. Um, because ICs are in leg right here. Um, and you're going to be able to secure center before they can. And you can also just do a runoff backer as well to cover them uh, coming in. Okay, I don't. I think a big thing is definitely work on using runoff in there. Fair, like runoff fair and aerials in general. In general, use runoff and those more. To threaten slash defense center stage. I think this is a good timestamp to point out. Um, three. 5837. Good example of you uh, putting yourself into this. 
session. By ICs out there. Actually, a good example of you. Yeah, actually allowing ICs to put under you. Down smashes are a big problem. Okay, so I mean, it, it kind of feels like you're falling apart a little bit. Um, I mean, I'm sure that getting that losing and like a uh, peach puff was really demoralizing, but you gotta gotta stay committed to the game plan and gotta remember that if you're gonna down smash against ice, you gotta hit both of them. Town smash that only hits Nana. Get them grabbed by Soko. By Pokeball. Rescue down smash right there. Okay. You gotta be more aggressive with your legend with your invincibility. Like the ice climbers assumed that you were going to short hop fair him, which is why he shielded right here. And you could have totally just gone for a short hop aerial. Like you don't, you don't have to. Uh, like you don't have to jump away here at all. This is actually a pretty good position for you, and I think you should be taking more advantage of it by pressuring shield with uh, short hop fair more. Um, so three, fifty eight, fifty three. We give up. Pressure IC shield with with fair instead dodging away to throw needles. I think in general uh, you're pretty predictable when ICs are at low percent in that in that like yeah. So you're pretty predictable when ICs are at low percent uh, because you just love, you absolutely love these needles, like these low percent needles. Uh, uh, be careful of overusing needles, especially when ICs are at low percent. Use more spaced air. Pressure ICs, especially when they're shielding. Because um, remember that ICs shield, ICs and shield are uh, shield. Okay, remember that shielding ICs like are. They get kind of bopped by shield pressure um, because they have really low traction, so they slide back, which makes it really hard for them to grab you, and they don't really have any quick aerials they can use to like break out of the pressure. So that shielding ICs are really bad. Really, I guess not really bad, but really, really easy to shield. Pressure with fair. Short hop fair because of low traction. Okay. 
So I guess yeah, this is a situation that I want to see you take more advantage of. So this one, this situation right here is one that you should be capitalizing on pretty much all the time because the ice climbers like don't have a hitbox that can cover this space right here which is where you'll be when you fare their shield um, like Nair isn't fast enough to cover that space Fair is like definitely too slow to cover that space um, and their grab is like tiny like the grab only is only covers like right here so definitely definitely work on taking advantage of these kind of spots uh, because being able to pressure Icy Shield in these spots are really important. So like, don't don't be afraid of pressuring the. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of pressuring Icy's with short hump fair. Not fair bear. Or fastball near. Fastball near is also really good against ice use. Um, game one, we were pressuring the short half fair really well, but stopped. I guess, but like in game three, we overused shield drop. Their shield drop aerials and stop pressuring with your short hop. Okay, moving on. No, wait. Wait a minute. No, no, give me back to slipping tool. Okay. Okay, yeah, so I uh, something I'm noticing is that whenever you throw a needle, you kind of stay in the same vertical positioning. I mean, I guess, hold it. Okay. So when you throw the, these needles, you have a habit of staying in the same kind of general area of the stage, like horizontal. Uh, like you mix up where you go vertically, right? But you always stay in kind of the same horizontal area. And that's, I think, something that the ISQ's player has really been paying attention to. And, like, he's he's already called you out on a few times. He's already gotten a few, like, meaty full jump up airs on you for being predictable with where you go when you're throwing needles. Okay. Oh. Uh -huh. So, I mean, so I guess I see that you have a needle available to you right now, like right here. Okay, can you take it? Okay, so this is, this is just, so the reason why, why this runoff fair didn't work is just because I don't think you realized you only, well, you probably realized you only hit one climber, um, but it's really important when you don't hit uh, like, because Popo's right here, it means that your fair is only, you know, is it, your fair is only going to hit Nana. Um, so if you do fair here, then you're at huge risk of getting counterattacked by Popo. Which is what happens. Okay, so there's an... So there's another great example of you giving up a shield pressure opportunity. Okay, so like when you see when you see the ice climber shielding like this, I mean that's kind of a free shield pressure opportunity right there. So I have another timestamp. Three fifty-eight, fifty-nine. Another example of 
given an opportunity to pressure icy shield. I guess I'll capitalize that. Sure. Okay, yeah, so... I think the Ice Climbers player is really recognizing that when you're in, like, this positioning, like about... like about a boost grab away from the Ice Climbers, um, or actually, in more appropriately, in short hop fair range of the Ice Climbers, um, you pretty much always go to the platforms. like. I think in game in game one we were much better about mixing up, um, like in game one we were much better about mixing up the way that you aerial the ice combers, like the way that you approach them from this sort of position. And he's definitely caught on um, that, like he's definitely caught on to that to the fact that whenever you jump. Here in this at this range, you pretty much always go to the platforms, which is why it does that. Uh, the ice block here. So I think one thing one thing I definitely want to see more of. Uh, actually, I'll timestamp it. Three fifty nine. Use that forward. Short hop back there more in this spot. Fry cook by this point. Fry cook is caught onto. Always going for the shield drop fair in this spot. Okay, looking good, looking good. Okay, yeah, so. So definitely, definitely missed you'll drop fair there, missed opportunity. I assume you were trying to there there? Okay, yeah, then you just get caught in leg. Well, you get. I think you were scared of spot dodging there because you got you had gotten grabbed for it the other times you were in that kind of situation. I definitely want to see you use your full hop more. I think that's something you were doing in game one that you're not really doing as much here in game three. Okay. You and I, I think that's the first time you've done like a run cancel down smash like that, or like a run cancel move like that pretty much this entire set. Okay.
So again, this is another example of a really dangerous needle. So like, look at, look at this right here. Look at where ACs are. They're at the perfect range to like full jump up there. You. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Bad hero. I'm gonna check my levels real quick. Okay, looking good, looking good. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, great example of you, actually. Really risky needle that lets ICUs get under you with a jump up there. Um, so I guess this is this is a great example. This would be a great spot to mix in. Drop. The backer, which is something you don't do at all. The set. Okay. Hmm. So something I'm noticing is that like you're not really too good at getting well like you're it feels like a lot of the time like you have the kind of this binary that you're creating where you either wall in place with your with your aerials or you like jump and then uh, wall with your needles and you're not really doing this kind of like this kind of thing. You're not really getting the ice climbers to chase you. Like, whenever you, it feels like whenever you do a shield drop like this, you're always doing it in place. You're never really doing it forward and backward. Um, and that, I mean, that's, that's a big hole right there. It's like just in general. Mix up the wave lands to platforms. Don't. Always in place. I mean, that's just. Yeah, I think that would help you out a lot. And also, like. They also mix up how you wave into the platforms. Mix up what you do after. Dumped. Always aerial. And needle. Use more than shield drops. And I feel like something that's been a recurring theme in this set is that you really don't like, like when you get to. Do, 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 do. When you get to like this sort of situation, you don't, you never, you pretty much never run off aerial in this kind of spot. Although I guess run off aerial isn't, it's kind of scary just because of how low percent the ICs are. But, but still, I mean, like you pretty much always to the top platform try and go around to set up another needle angle. And at this point, it's getting pretty predictable.
Okay. No, so this is actually another example of of you like over focusing on Nana. On Nana. Uh, uh, example of you tunnel visioning on Nana and for And putting yourself at risk of getting grabbed by Popo. That's really what it is. Like against ICs, that's really important that you don't engage into bad spots. Um, so, like when you only hit one ICs with a needle, it's really important that you. You know, you don't make too aggressive of a play, and you don't commit yourself too much. Um, I think, in general, I think your commitments are getting you into some bad spots. Be careful. So, like, be careful of making hard commitments, like full hop needle or down smash. That leave you open to grab slash leave you vulnerable to grab slash ishish under you. That was kind of nice, I guess. <laughs> Ooh, nice arm stuck. Good stuff. Ooh, that was nice. Okay, this is this is starting to be a problem. Like when you have, it feels like when you have good spots like this one, you're giving them up. And when you get ICs in a bad spot, it's really important you keep on pressuring them with your short hop aerials, just because they're so they struggle so much with contesting, um, like this space above and in front of them that you can really kind of. Just whale on their shield with short hop aerials and be pretty safe with it. So, 4 o'clock, 40. Another example of you giving up a favorable, giving up a pr giving up an opportunity to pressure ICs after fairing them. And again, like the IC shielded because they knew they were in a bad spot. Yeah, okay, you. Okay, another example of you specifically double jumping away from an opportunity to pressure ICs. Moving on. Ooh, okay. So that was a good down smash because it hit both. I, it hit both climbers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Something that you're not doing at all is just like, what really, 
I think at this point, like look at, at this point I think Fry Cook is really tuned into this. Like he's really tuned into that whenever you do this full jump, you're pretty much always going to be needling from it. So at this point, I really want to see you short hop needling more out of this spot. You short hop needle more so that ICs can't get under you. So ICs can't get under your full jump. Another bad down smash. Okay, yeah, I think that's that's a big note. this come down on the unsafe dash matches. Especially careful of D-Smack smashing and only hidden. No, no, no. You'll almost always get grabbed by Pokeball. I'll get him. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so another thing that's really important to remember is that when you don't hit the ICs with a needle, uh, they can mess you up. <laughs> like, I mean, really, it's not much more complicated than that. Just be very careful. When, when ICs are waiting for you, then it gives them time to set up coverage on this spot right here. Because they can cover this spot, um, but pretty much only if, like they can cover this spot, but pretty much only if they have time, because their forward, like their main ways of covering this spot are going to be up smash, forward smash, uh, like pretty much just up smash and forward smash, and they need time to set those up, which they, and they don't have the time to set those up if they get needled, but if they don't get needled, then they have as much, they have more than enough time to set those up, which means that this fair actually becomes really unsafe to do. 
Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna post. I post this in Discord. Just watched. Just analyzed game three. And timestamps. Just let fry cook. So by Mm-hmm. Track to go from really open to getting a short hop fair and then a lot of spots. Turn this up near needles. Okay. Uh, da -da -da. I'm just gonna watch game one real quick. Also bump up speed. I'll watch this commentary too. 
Did they play yet? Okay, how'd that go? But like, yeah. Do you want to go a little bit? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I think that's pretty easy. Okay, look at... You, you were not doing this sort of dash dancing at all in game three. Also... I also... Okay, so we're watching game one. Again, I am. And one thing that immediately jumps out to me is that you're... Using your dash dance. Using your dash dance. Before animals, which you tend to do. Which you pretty much don't do at all. Okay, yeah. So you you love this exact like full hop and I think it's really important that you cut back on using it. So I'm just gonna move to posting stuff in, in the Discord. Oh don't need this. Don't save. Wait, no, uh, uh, and also, don't always have to.
I'm actually going to stop recording after I finish this stock. Okay, so one one thing I'm noticing is that like you're using your full hops, your full jump so much more, and like you're not relying on the platforms as much. Um, like I think one one thing I've no one theme I've noticed throughout your sets is that like it feels like you get stuck in the same patterns of movement, and you get stuck in the same like patterns of plat like especially patterns of platform movement. Um, and a lot of the time you'll kind of run away to the platforms instead of fighting on the ground. Um, and it's really important that you mix up between fighting on the ground and then also fighting from the like fighting from the platforms, using your full jump aggressively, like like what you've been doing here, like what you've been doing by crossing up the ice climbers, is really important for making that work. Um, because you know then, once the ice climbers player starts respecting your full jump aerials, they also like they can't cover the full jump like wave lands as much, and they can't cover you. You know, throwing needles and platforms out of your full jump as much. Like they can't cover, they can't cover you like double jumping to the platform and through falling down with needles, or like you double jumping to the platform and the shield dropping through. Like all that stuff is just it's you know much harder for the ICs to cover your movement when you're mixing it up by using full hops in addition to your platform movement, like full hops from the ground. Okay. Whereas other characters, you get that by football, you don't need Yeah, I like that. De I like that de the blizzard de Yeah, it's I think sick. it has a lot of potential that hasn't been used. Yeah, it's like... It cuts out options? It does. So also, when the ICs do it, they become more vulnerable. But whenever I see the ICs do a blizzard de I just charge it their mana, put her in a way, and repeat. So I, I mean, I, it depends on what the two ICs do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's, it's definitely an option. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not terrible. It's just, it makes you, I think it makes you slightly more uh, I mean... So one positive thing I'd like to point out about that is that you... You were using your short hop more. Actually, I think something I've noticed is that you either... It feels like you either use your short hop for pressure, or you use your, your shield jobs for pressure, and you don't really, like, mix up between them in the same pressure sequence. Um, so, like, when ICs are cornered, like, you'll either be like short hopping at them with fair or shield drop fairing them and you don't really mix up between them in this like in the same like five second span um, which makes it a lot easier for the ice climbers to deal with like it makes it a lot easier for the ice climbers to deal with your pressure if you're always doing it the same way um, Uh, I was talking earlier about, uh, I think it was Yoshi versus, it was, it was Yoshi versus, uh, the Isis. And, um, Yoshi was, was camping, uh, top flat, right? And, uh, Isis was, like, just below them, right? But that wasn't working out for him. What totally could have been done is uh the bottom, go to the side platform. Okay. Yeah. And I like what you're doing here. So you cover the Ooh. the yeah. and do the blizzard you sink. So you cover the the So yeah. and do the blizzard you I think one thing I'd like so to see the, more is like just focusing on getting mana off stage as soon as possible. <laughs> um, also noticing that you up there mana a bit too much. And after you up there, you'll 
or instead of just fairing the so just fairing the center of the stage. Bad down smash gets you punished. Yeah, I think that they have ways of covering like multiple options. I just think, like, generally speaking, setting it up usually leaves them more vulnerable than if they were to Basically, when they when she's needling the side flat like that, you want to try to really guys you and push up there. So you see how like they did that right there. That's kind of so definitely be careful about using like too many needles, right? Like um, I think Frycook is definitely like at this point Frycook is definitely caught on. He knows that a lot of time when you land for a needle, you're gonna be a lot of the time. Like, so a lot of time when you land for a needle, you almost always um, like full hot needle immediately. Uh, which is, you know, not, it's not the best to always do the same type of needles. It's really important you gotta mix, that you mix those up. Um, this is another example of, of a time where I would rather see you forward air than, than up air. There's a great example of that. Two nineteen. Oh, nice. See, a lot of players right there would have been tempted to just go and kill Nana, but that time he target switched right on to Popo like really fast. So, because he can't control Nana, Nana won't go down. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is this right here. Target switch right on to Popo. This right here. So there's a great example of the stuff I'm talking about where like you'll fall into the same kind of pattern of shield dropping, like shield drop early. Then Fryco calls you out for it and gets you. Yeah, yeah. So I like Fryco knows that that his net is vulnerable and it's likely that the sheep's gonna try to go like bear her. So he he just waits for the bear and waits to punish, but instead Okay, so one thing I'm noticing is that you you're like using your runoff fares a lot more. In game one, and also use runoff fair. Actually, I'm just gonna stop recording. Actually, okay, no, I'm gonna get through the rest of game one uh, first. So that you also use runoff fair a lot more in game one. Which makes fry cook. Which. Forces to respect and not which keeps fry cook. Just Actually, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna say that. Ooh. Oh, I think Alec didn't know that oh. he was going to make it back. 
crispy there. Yeah, well, that's Oof. Okay. Um, so I guess big takeaway is that like you, I think big takeaway is that Hero needs to be a lot less predictable with the way he uses the platforms. Um, and like he, I think he needs to focus more on keeping center stage. Like when he has center stage, and like when he has center stage in game one, he did a fantastic job of protecting it and using full like full jump aerials. I like to to contest the ice climbers coming in. Um, because the ice climbers are also pretty bad at covering full jump aerials if they're not directly under you. Um, and they're also pretty bad at covering you crossing them up uh, if, with an aerial. And those are both things that Hero was doing really well in game one. And he kind of stopped doing them as much in game two, or in game three, which is, you know, why, which is, I think, the main reason why he lost. Um, yeah, so I guess another, so another big thing. Last big thing I'm noticing is that you is that in game one you were using for center with your full hop a lot more. You're using the full hop on progressive. And you have center stage, whereas in game three, you pretty much always ran over to the platforms instead of fighting Odysseys. They're really bad at covering. Hmm. Covering. Uh... Okay, hold on. I'm gonna take a call right quick. Why not? They're really bad at covering full hops. Covering jumps unless they're trampling. Low you, which you can take advantage of. Full jump, but there is a pretty commitment for them. By crossing them up. That's a jump. think that does it. So I'm gonna do 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 I'm gonna take a little food break, get some food. Uh, and then watch a little bit. Like watch the fox sets. So I'll just adjust my levels a little bit, get desktop audio, all good. Go to my fox playlist. Yeah, let's, let's just watch Levin messing up a fox. That sounds good. No, oh, we're on two pools? Perfect. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Let's go, Homestar. Homestar. 